Now, the reaction that I put in the board actually doesn't really work very well. These are not activated enough to really do the Diels-Alder reaction. Usually we need to add activating substituents to make the Diels-Alder reaction work better. Well, what types of substituents would we want to add to the diene to make this work better? Electron donating substituents or electron withdrawing substituents? To the diene? Yeah. Electron withdrawing. Donating. Why donating? Because you want it to be more electron rich. To be a nucleophile. That's why we just had to go over this idea of who's acting like the nucleophile and who's acting like the electrophile. It's the electron richness of the diene that makes it act like a nucleophile, but it's still not really reactive enough in this, in this picture. To make it more reactive, we have to add more electron donating substituents. So we have to ask, what types of substituents would activate us for a Diels-Alder? No. Well, sorry? Oh. Methyls. Yeah. Alkyl groups. Alkyl groups. That's right. That's good that you remember that. We've seen many examples now in the course that carbon chains, almost also known as alkyl groups, are electron donating. And that's just something we have to have memorized. Adding alkyl groups here are one good way, in fact, the main good way to activate the diene. And what type of substituents do we need to activate the electrophile? Well, electron withdrawing substituents. Oxygens or carbonyls. Those sound reasonable. Let's talk some more about that. Well, would we consider this electron donating or withdrawing? Withdrawing. That's right. Why so? Because the fluorine is pulling, is ele pulling the, the electrons towards effect. it. Inductive effect. That's right. Because these are highly electronegative, this is pulling the electrons away. So would this activate or deactivate this dienophile? Activate. Because we wanted electron withdrawing substituents. You might have already seen this is a common substituent that's used for the Diels-Alder reaction. Now, how about this? Is this electron donating or withdrawing? Withdrawing. That's right. And why is that? Because the pi electrons can move up towards the oxygen, which is away from the double bond. Good. That's good. Now, there's another. Also, there is an inductive effect that you didn't mention yet. The oxygen will pull the electrons towards it just through its electronegativity, but it's good that you focus more on the resonance effects. We know that this term, we're especially focusing on resonance. We always want to ask if there's another resonance structure that we can draw. Now, you suggested that we draw this electron pushing arrow. That would be good. However, remember that what we're trying to activate is this double bond. So we'll get more insight if we draw the resonance structure like this. And that makes it very clear how this other resonance structure is definitely withdrawing electrons from this alkene di dienophile portion of the molecule over here. So this is the best resonance structure to draw to show why this is electron withdrawing. That's something that yeah, I would expect you might have to do on the next test, draw resonance structures to show why something is electron withdrawing or electron donating. So here would be a good way to do that. electron donating or electron withdrawing. 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 What would be the most important reason? The nitrogen is electronegative and it's pulling electrons towards itself. Or the bonds can go over and have a minus right. charge on them. So you gave the inductive argument, which is good, uh, but you gave the resonance argument, which is even better. Don't it's even they, like go together though, like because the nitrogen is electronegative and it wants to pull electrons, the bonds will move. Yep, that's a fair point. Uh, that's a fair point. 
Um, so the, the fact that this is electronegative also influences the resonance argument. That's a good point. Nevertheless, it's still important to actually phrase that in terms of resonance, but, but that's a good point. So the nitrogen is directly pulling the electrons through the inductive effect because of its electronegativity, and the electronegativity of the nitrogen also influences what resonance structures we would draw. All right, well, um, so you would draw arrows like this again, and again, these arrows would end up putting a positive charge over here. I won't bother drawing that, but it would be just like we have down here. What if you have like an NH2 though? Wouldn't that be donating? Because its pi bonds can go towards? Like this? Yeah. That's right. Now this is tricky. That, that's a good argument. By induction, this is electron withdrawing because it's electronegative. But by resonance, it's electron donating. And generally speaking, if there's a, uh, if there's a tug of war between induction and resonance, resonance is usually stronger. So we would act, I would expect that this would be electron donating. I'm not 100% sure in this context because I've never actually seen a question like this. I've never actually seen a deals auger question where they tested this idea. So this is a little bit um, uh, unusual question. But if it did come up, that would be the analysis that I would give, that this is mainly electron donating. But it's still good that you brought that up because um, the fact that NH2 groups are electron donating is very crucial when you get to benzene, which is the next chapter that you're getting to. So even though NH2 groups are not really uh, used very much for Diels-Alder, it's very important for benzene that these are mainly electron donating through resonance. So we'll be getting back to that. Well, again, generally speaking, you're not really ever going to see a reaction just like this. There has to be some activating substituents on at least one of these. The other reason this is important is because this helps you figure out who's going to be the diene and who's going to be the dienophile, if there's any doubt. If you're not sure who's going to be the diene and who's going to be the dienophile, well, the thing with electron donating substituents is likely to be the diene, and the thing with electron withdrawing substituents is likely to be the dienophile. So by the way, I guess all of these substituents I have over here on the right-hand side of the board, these are all examples of electron withdrawing. Electron withdrawing, electron withdrawing, electron withdrawing, electron withdrawing. Most of them are electron withdrawing through mainly resonance, and this is electron withdrawing through induction. We talked about how alkyl groups are electron donating through actually what's called hyperconjugation. But anyway, we just memorized that alkyl groups are electron donating. Now you might think that we don't need any help to find who's the diene and who's the dienophile, because you might say this always has two double bonds and this has one double bond, but that's not true. It's possible that this molecule could have other double bonds in it and that only one of them is participating. So there really can be cases where it's not that easy to tell who's the diene and who's the dienophile, and it helps to look for these substituents. the mechanism and the product here. Let's actually uh, draw the mechanism and all products.
Let's talk about that some.